Uh, welcome. We have our two new additions uh, to us here. So maybe uh, we can, I think I like to always start off with a quick introduction. I think, uh, you know, uh, why don't uh, Todd, you take the handle here and give a quick intro of to yourself and maybe uh, tell people where you're, where you're coming from today. Absolutely. Thanks, Art. Uh, but before I do that, if, if you don't mind, um, a Alex, uh, did you remember to get the night crawlers? Um, cause I, cause I'm ready to go. So uh, <laughs> I, I actually completely forgot. So you're going to have to, I mean, you did say, start quick. you did say we're going to the stream to have some real time, <laughs> right? Like, cause I've got my reel here and uh, opposite, opposite oh. order there. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah, real yeah, time, yeah. real time streaming. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. I, I completely misunderstood. I, I know you said you were going to the cabin today. I thought we were going to the stream to get in some real time. I, my apologies. I've, I've entirely misled you this entire time. I, it, it's, it's all good. It, that's on, on me. Todd Sharp, developer advocate, Amazon Interactive Video Service, aka Amazon IVS. And uh, very excited to be on this side of the stream today because I usually run my own stream every Wednesday uh, on the Twitch AWS Twitch channel, but it's it's a little refreshing, a little less uh, less. I don't want to say pressure, but I can kind of let go and just be the guest today. So I'm I'm excited. Uh, I'm in Georgia, the upper north crazy mm -hmm. mountains of Georgia. Um, you may hear my rooster in the background. I've got some chickens here. So yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me in the frat house today. We are we're thrilled to have you here. It's going to be a party, and uh, afterward, if I live near Georgia, I would be coming over for uh, fish fry tonight for sure. That's I'm I'm actually smoking some meat tomorrow. My today is uh, Dominic Sharp, my son, it's his 16th birthday today. So uh, we're going to have a nice party tomorrow and smoke some meat and have some all kinds of barbecue and good stuff. So you're welcome to join everybody. Everybody in chat, we've got a few hundred people here. Y'all come down and uh, we'll have some barbecue. I love good. I love barbecue. All right. Now, by the way, I, I just, I will give you some props. I have never seen anyone show up with their fishing reel. So <laughs> totally impressed. I don't know, Farah. Next, we, we've got to step up our skills here. You know, I, I, didn't I, didn't have... I mean, so like, what do you call a fish wearing a bow tie? Oh, uh, please, please tell us. It's a fish decated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's. You you even you've even got Meadow laughing on that one over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we have another quick intro as well. So Alex, uh, you know, yeah. why don't you intro yourself here, and we I, can get I going. I fortunately didn't forget that we were coming to demo real time streaming today. But uh, my name is Alex Dodge. I'm a senior software manager for Amazon IVS, specifically on the real time team, uh, and specifically folks on the website. So. Uh, I'm currently on the east coast of Canada in a small province called Nova Scotia. It's nearly an island, but uh, yeah, so happy to happy to join you folks here today. I just want to say I'm an American who's visited uh, Nova Scotia. <laughs> so of there, all of I hope we've here. left a lasting impression. You did. It was a, an impression of a lifetime. I took a boat over there. I still think it's an island, no matter what you say. <laughs> uh, so, all right, we'll 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 talk about that some other time. But let's talk about... Uh, um, it, let's talk a little bit here about it, exactly what we're going to demo uh, shortly as, as we go forward here. I think that, you know, the, we've uh, been teasing Farah this demo here on real time IVS. We should probably get going and, and define what Amazon Interactive Video Service is and, and uh, how it's used. Absolutely. Um, I'd be glad to, to help out with that. Amazon Interactive Video Service, uh, like I said, also known as IVS, as you see in my title here and Alex's title, is an AWS service that enables developers to build live streaming applications. It's built on, actually, it's built on the same technology that powers Twitch. So when you think about building your own live streaming application like Twitch, you would reach for Amazon IVS. So traditionally, since this service launched several years ago, the Technology that has been used to deliver these live streams is called HLS. Um, and that stands for Alex. HTTP live streaming. Thank you, sir. Uh, and HTTP live streaming was created a long time ago 
in as a result or in reaction to the uh, it's Apple's fault or it's uh, Steve Jobs' fault. When Flash was killed, we needed a basically a new way to deliver live streamed video to the web. So when back in the day, you would have a Flash player, it had the capability to deliver RTMP or Alex. Real-time media protocol. RTMP streams directly to your browser. And uh, since Flash died, we needed a new technology to handle that and thus HLS was born. So traditionally HLS can deliver live video with anywhere from, I would say two very, very perfect, uh, Alex says messaging protocol. So, yeah, I said media, but it's messaging. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, RTMP, right? Yes, 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 yes. Messaging. There we go. Um, uh, by the way, I'm feeling left out of the quiz session. I just, I want to throw that out there. So oh, okay. Well, I'll throw some to you next. No, Art. Ask the next one to yeah. Farah, not to me. Farah okay. knows all of them. All right. This um, is this is this is a, a game of acronyms. Yes. <laughs> every, I mean, isn't that the thing with every large company? Acronyms are just piles. Well, I, I go further. I think it's actually a, a thing with a lot of these protocols that we all deal with. You know, this stuff is, you know, I, I don't think that anybody really remembers what HTTP stands for any longer, right? But there was a purpose and a point, and it was supposed to be a very descriptive, cool title. I would just describe it as like a tech acronym. You know, RTMP isn't really an Amazon acronym, right? It's just a protocol that has existed out there um, for quite some time. So, <clears throat> okay. So we talked briefly about the existing protocols yes. and we talked a little bit about how things had to change. And we've also talked about how this uh, it, here is something that people can take advantage of. So where are we? And give us some more data here. Absolutely. So just to finish that thought on HLS very, very quickly, HLS can deliver video with anywhere, best case scenario, around two seconds of latency to probably around 30 seconds of latency, which... I, you know, for certain things, that's perfectly acceptable. If I'm live streaming my Call of Duty until 1.30 in the morning tonight when I'm playing with my friends, um, 30 seconds of lately, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's not a latency sensitive application, right? It's something that works just fine. But when you start to look at some of these other use cases, when you start to think of things like maybe... Farah and I would like to have a karaoke competition on a live stream. Maybe Art and I would like to have a dance off. Art, are you are you ready? Do you want? There will be no dance no? off. Uh, but okay. I I'll am. Take them both. I'll take them both. I can do both. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, think about this application that we're using right now, right? I'm in Georgia. Uh, you're in the Bay Area. Alex is in Canada. Uh, we're all in different corners of the uh, the continent right now. Our viewers are watching us with a few seconds of latency, but if you and myself and Farah and Alex and Meadow had two to five to 10 to 20 seconds of latency, this would not be possible what we're doing right now. So what you need instead of HLS is you need real-time latency. And that's the product, that's the service slash capability that we're here to talk about that we've recently launched with Amazon IVS. Alex, what, uh, if, could you give us like a quick I'll give you, I'll overview? Give you, give you the primer. So, yeah. so we're, we're talking two seconds of latency at best. And we're saying that you can't really have a conversation with that kind of latency, but people want to be able to interact in this call. We'd love people on the Twitch stream and any other stream that we're having to be able to share that conversation. So what we're talking about with IVS real-time streaming, is 300 milliseconds of latency or less. We're talking that you can share this with up to 10,000 people watching at one time. And you can have up to 12 participants on the stream. So 12 hosts, so that means 12 people sharing their video out to an audience of up to 10,000 people. Super, super exciting stuff. And uh, it just opens up so many possible use cases. The really nice thing about having this in Amazon Interactive Video Service is that it also works in conjunction. If you have a use case where, for example, you wanted to build a tool like we're using right now, where we're having a real-time conversation between some hosts, 
but we can broadcast that over HLS where the end user latency is not as critical as the latency between the hosts, you can do that. You can combine that offering with our traditional HLS offering. And that allows you to do things like record that conversation to S3 and archive it for video on demand playback later on, um, all kinds of other possibilities that that opens up as well. So um, I'm really excited to demo this out. Uh, we have a couple demos that have been created by our super talented team inside uh, our whole organization has been working on this tirelessly uh, you know for quite a while now to deliver this and that's why we're so excited about it but our design team has created our design team and some of our engineers have created some both demos and sample apps to allow us to show off these kind of things as well as give developers kind of a jumping off point right something they could download and get started with and build their own application with it so um, are you all ready to take a look I'm at ready. those? And, and, I'm ready. And I, I couldn't think of a more perfect forum to do this, frankly. So we're streaming right now. A lot of people out there that are, are streaming as well. I think there are a lot of people out there that can take advantage of this. So I'm ready to go. Absolutely. So uh, Art, if you want to share out my screen, uh, we could get started with a couple of these demos. One Big shout out to Brian and Meadow, by the way. You all are super talented, and thank you so much for, for pro providing the service that you do. Very much appreciate it. Cool. Uh, I think that they said thank you, but <laughs> <laughs> my ASL skills are poor. All right. Are we ready to go demo-wise here? I'm ready Did to go. Can, uh, can everybody in chat see that screen all right? If not, I can bump up the font size a little bit. But uh, I think you should be able to see it. We're mm -hmm. going to get started with what is uh, a kind of a, it's a mobile demo. And again, this was created by our design team, Maxime and uh, um, Sang. I'm sorry, <laughs> had a little brain moment there. Maxime and Sang and, and uh, um, Andre uh, did uh, some work on the serverless demo, right, Alex? Am I missing anyone there? Yeah, yeah it's everyone. Okay. Uh, and so this demo is a Android and there's an Android aspect to it. And there's also an iOS aspect to it. And both of them rely on this serverless side, uh, this serverless demo that we're going to take a quick look at. And I know Farah, I see you getting excited about that because I know that that's something that's right up your wheelhouse, right? It definitely is. Okay. Um, love to see the serverless backends. It's always good to see that technology, uh, on screen. Excellent. And maybe before we jump in, I'll give a quick context too that that as IVS, what we expose is you get uh, CLIs that you can use to work with these things. You get you know your experience in the console, and then we also provide SDKs across web, iOS, and Android that developers can use to integrate these experiences. So we're going to be kind of touching all those all those endpoints today. Absolutely, uh, and thank you, Alex. That was a perfectly perfect uh, little add-on there. Um, so this demo, as I said, is the serverless backend that the Android and iOS applications will connect to in order to handle some of the necessary functionality that they need to handle. So if I scroll down here, and, and we'll share out these links at the end if you want to check these out for yourself. But if I scroll down a little bit here, we see this architecture di <laughs> diagram, which is a little difficult to read at this point. But if I <laughs> <laughs> click over to this screen over here, and zoom in a little bit, we can quickly walk through some of this. So uh, on the right-hand side, of course, is your customer, your mobile application. The uh, mobile application connects up to a CloudFront distribution. That CloudFront distribution fronts an API gateway. Mm -hmm. And the API gateway, if I scroll over here, has various endpoints for the functionality that needs to uh, that is needed by the mobile application. So we have some Lambda functions here. In this case, the first one is a uh, post method that is called slash create, and that handles creating what is called a stage resource. And a stage resource is simply the uh, element in the IVS world that handles the connections of multiple hosts to one another. So we need to create a stage and each stage participant, uh, whether they be hosts or viewers, must have a participant token. So it's not something where you can just expose a stage or a real-time conversation to any user. Every user that connects has to have a participant token. So um, whether those are 
publish only, subscribe only. Alex does a good job of covering kind of that whole. You want to you want to do that? Yeah, yeah. Piece so, so basically, we expose a bunch of different features that people can configure on their token, and as you join. Uh, in a traditional system, in our traditional broadcast system, it's usually someone who's just uploading video and then we would be watching this you know, on a stream live. Uh, but you can do a lot of other things too. You can be a publisher, which means you're sending media. You can be a subscriber, which means you're receiving media. So you actually have your participant who's either a host or a viewer. They can actually be both at the same time. You're both sending and receiving media. Um, and so there's that flexibility that you have with your tokens. Um, and you can add a bunch of metadata to them as well. So in your user application, you can actually go and get uh, this information and you can encode a lot of business logic um, when you go create these tokens. Absolutely. And I was uh, distracted for a second there, but did you mention that you could be both audio and yeah, audio only or video only or audio video, right? Yeah, exactly. So th there's also a feature too. Once you have your token and you have your permissions of whether you can send or receive media, in that context, you can also only send audio, only send video. And so there's a lot of flexibility with what kind of experience you want to build, what kind of media you're sending back and forth. Absolutely. Perfect. So we have these various endpoints within the serverless backend. And if I scroll over here to the side, we can see that the serverless demo is uh, has a DynamoDB table behind it and some uh, a state machine and a uh, event schedule. So it's basically this condensed but comprehensive backend for these two mobile applications. And if we jump over to this tab over here, this is the IVS real time for Android demo. And this is contains, like I said, everything we need to get started with this mobile application. So if I copy this URL here, and if I go to my console and I do a git clone for that URL, I can pull that down to my machine. I can hop over to Android Studio. And I, this, uh, let me bump that font up a little bit. Well, I can't bump up that font, but that's okay because we're not gonna actually look at the code. We're just gonna launch the app because it's already ready to go. The code here is like feature complete. We can actually just launch this at this point. Oh, you know what? One second, let me, let me back up one quick second. To deploy that serverless demo, uh, it is a matter of one-click deploy. So you can click on the one-click deploy with CloudFormation, or you can run that from the command line. And once that stack is done being created, it will create that CloudFront distribution for you and all of the other, you know, the infrastructure, the DynamoDB tables, all of those Lambda functions. It'll create all of those, deploy all of those, and it'll create some outputs. So you'll take some of the values from those outputs the readme here will walk you through that. You'll take some of those values from those outputs. And when you launch the mobile application on either Android or iOS, you plug in those values and that's how that app knows which backend to use for the demo. So I certainly should mention that piece of it. So back in Android Studio here, once I've cloned this, I've opened it up in Android Studio, I can then actually launch this on my device. So if I unlock my device here and I maximize this screen, we can see that right now I've already launched the demo and I have a username of Billberry Olive. Do y'all like olives? I like olives. I love olives. What do you like? I better? love olives. I'm Green or black? It. Green or black? Green in my martini. Okay. Alex, yourself? Uh, yeah. I love a good, uh, uh, I think uh, olive stuff with garlic would be the preference. Ooh, like a tapenade maybe? Yeah, something, yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a little, little sidetrack there. Sorry about that. Uh, so if I zoom in a little bit here, should be able to see that a little better, hopefully. Yeah, so sure. Billberry, Billberry Olive, uh, I've got my application running. And if I create a new stage at this point, I can either select video stage or audio room. So I'm creating a new stage and this will be where my uh, fellow users who want to chat with me can um, join me. So I'm going to create a video stage. And if I click video stage, it will launch. And I've got my mobile device off to the side here. But this app is now up and running. I have joined it as a part uh, participant. Do you want to give it a mute? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead and mute that just so that we feedback. don't get any feedback or echo, right? And so Go I'll ahead, say Alex. right now, uh, so this, this is demonstrating the, one of the first things we can do. So this is like a traditional broadcast. 
Uh, Todd's sending me his video right now. And so right now he's on the other side of things. I'm watching him, which is great. And we've got real time. So if you wave. Wow. You see, it, you see how everyone was in sync there? So that <laughs> means the conversation we're having in the call and the conversation back and forth in the application, that's real time. So that's yeah. less than 300 seconds of, of latency. So again, interactive. Uh, but that's not all. So I'm going to join the call now as a, as a guest. I so, don't know about you, Tara, but I'm very impressed so far. First, we get to see triple the Todd initially here when <laughs> Alex brought it up. I, you know, and now, oh, wait a minute, here we go. Now we get double the Alex. But the key here is is the low latency. This is yeah. super impressive. Super yeah. impressive. Right. And this is why we call my show Streaming on Streaming, because most of the time we end up streaming while we're streaming. So wait, um, wait a minute. Every week when you do your show, you do like person in person. We see you. We watch you twice. Uh, most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time I'm building something or demoing something that involves my screen being uh, shown on the stream. So I can do a little couple hearts. Do you there. show up to the, every stream with your fishing pole? I, I don't. I, that's a very special uh, okay. prop that I brought just for AWS on air. So uh, uh, we appreciate it. I figured you would. I, so I was told that you're very things. fond of dad jokes. <laughs> so this is this is great. So again, like we're talking about interactivity, um, we see this sort of thing is really really effective in uh, live latency applications that require that kind of immediate response, right? So like auction based applications, UGC. Um, and, and they're also talking too about, um, there's, a, there's a mode in this called uh, PK mode. It's a very popular thing we see some of our customers using. And so I'm gonna swap over to that. And, yeah, and this, this is the kind of feature that you would have when we're doing those kind of like dance offs or, or karaoke competitions or um, you know, see who has the nicest beard. I mean, the, whatever, you know, whatever kind of competition you have here. So and, if, if, if you were all in this application, you'd be seeing right now that I am, I've got more stars than Todd. Oh, I need to go faster. My camera is kind of shaking around <laughs> oh, no, a little oh, bit. No. Oh no, I missed. There. Ah, and uh, I think I've so lost. Maybe maybe we're singing, maybe we're dancing or doing something. But uh, but our audience is voting in real time along with us. And that, oh, there see, Alex has won. So, but that's where that real time latency for, not only for Alex and myself, but for our viewers, like if this was our application and I, you know, whatever our application was called, um, they would be able to see that real time, you know, view as well. Uh, we also have, we're not going to demo it here, but there's also an audio only mode. So we're seeing customers who want to create these like just rooms. And, you know, if you, if you launch that mode, you would have this set of tiles that just have an icon and anybody can come and go. So if Farah wanted to join or Brian or Art wanted to join and, and just have a conversation, a real time audio conversation, you'd be able to create an app, uh, an application just like that with, with this, uh, capability. So I think it'd be it's super exciting. cool too for like classrooms or if like you're teaching, you know, to be able to have, you know, people put their hand up and to be able to respond very quickly or for like content creators that are really trying to grow their platforms, you know, and they do giveaways and things like you really need that real time. To, like that's, you can't have any latency that, that way because like somebody might've put their hand up first or interacted in a way. Um, so this is super impressive. It's, it's almost like you, yeah. I think we need to hire Farah because she's, she's on the ball. She is right there. She's got the proper, uh, the proper use cases already kind of nailed right there. That's exactly right. Um, Art, I, th uh, I think we were talking uh, about another p possible use case on our prep call, uh, auctions, real-time auctions. Like we, we talked yeah. touched on that a little bit earlier, but let's say, you know, I wanted to auction off, you know, whatever I have on my desk, I like these LED rings and I wanted to, you know, get, sell my uh, Amazon. Cents. <laughs> See right there. I've got a, I've got a bid right now. Um, but imagine you're trying to do that on a low latency connection and someone has, uh, you know, someone has a really good connection and they're getting your feed really quickly, low latency. And then there's someone maybe, you know, 700 miles away that may be getting a little slower latency. That's not fair. They're never going to be able to, win the bid on that item you know no and what happens if, if you are the seller just i know you know we focus a lot on the bid of the trying to get you know i'm going to try to put it placed in get the lowest cost for myself but also there's the impact to the seller too you know what if my bid doesn't come in early enough and you accept alex's bid for 50 cents when i am ready to offer you 56 cents and 
you know, relative to sense here, six cents is a difference. But imagine, you know, in a different operation, the real time, the, the cost could be you. Everyone loses out. It's kind of a lose lose uh, just because of the streaming. I mean, just because of latency. Excuse me. You're absolutely right. Um, and if we have time, do we have time for another little fun demo here? I'm always game for another demo, so right. I'm yeah. not going to stop a demo. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at it. It's a little less pretty, I would say, because it's not focused on that user experience, demoing that user experience that's possible with this, but it's more focused on the technology behind it and um, really something that a developer could use to kind of understand quickly how this service can be implemented on either mobile or in the web. So um, what we're going to do now is we're in the Amazon IVS console uh, and we're going to actually create a stage. So if I click on create stage and I call this the frat house stage and I scroll Love down, name, by the way, Love the name. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, very um, creative. And if I click create stage, I still don't understand what like the the word of the day like what what is what is the purpose of that? To have fun. Oh, okay. Uh, Shouldn't we like yeah, all scream when it gets it, when it gets mentioned? It's, uh, it's pride, not prize. That's what happens. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um. Yeah. So I shouldn't have wasted any time with a stupid joke there because you missed how quickly that stage was created and is available for us. It's immediately available. I could use this stage right now. And if I scroll down and look at some of my details, I can see the name right now. It's idle, meaning nobody is connected to that stage. Here's my ARN. And if I scroll down a little bit further, as I mentioned earlier, every user that connects to a stage must have a participant token. Um, Normally, your application is going to use the SDKs, you know, the, either the JavaScript SDK or the Java SDK or the Ruby, whatever language you're using on the back end, you'll use that to generate your participant tokens. But the nice thing is for development purposes, you could create one right here within the console. So if I create one right now and I call it Todd one and I grant it publish and subscribe capabilities, we can also uh, specify a TTL, a token duration, how long this token, um, uh, before, how long before it expires. And Alex, this is, correct me if I'm wrong, this is just first use, right? This is not... Um, yeah, so so when you when you do this, this is just uh, that the token can't get reused. So if you want to ensure it's a short life, you only want to have like one use tokens, you can make it really short. But um, once a user joins a the stage, they, they're in, they're not going to get kicked out if their right. token expires. So if I had put five minutes, for example, it, it, that doesn't mean that someone can only join for five minutes. That means that the token must be redeemed within five minutes. Okay. Correct. So well, it sounds like a security protection, right? You know, you get yeah, exactly. you want to get yourself started. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, quick, and, quick question for the from the audience: uh, Is there a higher performance impact for broadcasters using IVS real time versus low latency? Higher performance impact, Alex. You want to cover that one? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so I'd say today we see a couple of different systems and overall, honestly, there's probably not too much of a significant difference. I think what we're really talking about here is a difference in protocol because underlying what we're using is two fundamentally, fundamentally different protocols, one being RTMP to upload video and the other being WebRTC, which is underlying. And so WebRTC is based off of UDP, which is we get to control how fast and how much error recovery we want in our system and uh, underlying. So those use different libraries. Those libraries have different impacts. But at the end of the day, we're still encoding a certain amount of video on those devices, which then get up uploaded. So um, again, both of these systems allow us to use different codecs and different media protocols. So um, I'd say you're probably seeing a similar amount of performance. Um, but uh, the nice thing is when we're using the real-time SDKs, we're getting a much lower latency because we're using a protocol that allows us to. And for those of you in the uh, chat who are not video experts, like someone like Alex, um, the good news is all of those different video codecs and protocols, you don't need to know anything about those. Like me, I'm completely ignorant to some of that stuff, but I can still do it. I can still build these applications. I don't need to know, uh, you know, everything about AV1 or, um, you know, H.264. I, I know that they exist. I know that they're media codecs, but I don't need to be an expert in them. That's what's so great about IVS to me. 
I don't have to be a video expert to build video streaming applications. I have 100%. people like Alex behind the scenes that can handle all that difficult stuff for us. I love the simplicity that, that it allows you to get started and it creates a start. I think there's a lot of us out there, especially probably hopefully even in the chat who do streaming and we know, you know, you want the highest uh, band, you want the highest quality of stuff. But you don't necessarily need to be want to become an expert in any of these protocols. You know, you want to, and sometimes because of the the I think because of so many of these names here, there's a lot of gobbledygook about is 264 <laughs> actually better than 265, or really 265 is better than 264. And then what really is AV1 versus H265? Like you know, when it asks me to make make a choice, you're like, well, I like A. My name starts with A. All right, we'll go with right, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying how people go about these choices. Not that, you know. So. Yeah, no. That's why I really want to draw attention to the SDKs because um, at the end of the day, our server side SDKs, our CLIs, those SDKs are making it really easy for developers to integrate with these services. And the client SDKs are making it really easy. You just, you put them on your device, you integrate them in your application, you look through the demos that we have. And I, I think that's the, dem the demo we're showing right now. Very, very simple demo. But again, this is showing you fundamentally how easy it is this is from from a you know user perspective, it looks complex, but from a developer perspective, it's very, very simple. So the demos are already there. You literally put in your token, Todd's gonna send me a token, and I'm just gonna join. And really you can play around with our code pens, you can play around with the GitHub samples. Um, and it's just gonna it's gonna expedite the amount of time it takes you to to get an application up and running. Absolutely. And I'm just creating that token right now for Alex, and I'm gonna send it to him on my other monitor here. And while, while we were chatting there, I launched this, uh, this sample application on my mobile device. So that's what we're seeing here. Let me actually make it my, okay. I just had to get you all back on this screen so I could see you all. Um, so I've launched this mobile application here, this sample application, and I've got some debug information overlaying me on top here, but I pasted in my participant token and I clicked join. Oops, I double clicked it, sorry. So I click join and you could see right now, again, here's Alex and I having a real time conversation. And I mean, Alex wave again. If you look at the difference between him on the left and on the right, it's, it's identical. I mean, it's frame, I, I, almost frame I for frame. Out of the I mean, me too. <laughs> yeah, like, why don't we get to wave? I, I, I apologize for that. But so, uh, so, this is an example. And what Alex joined us on, if I go back over to here, he joined us right from here. And this is a simple code pen application that is running right in code pen that he could select his camera. He could select his microphone. He could paste in his participant token and he can click join stage. Now, if I create myself another token over here, can I ask one question as we do that, you know, does it also, uh, just select a default on the camera and the audio and that sort of thing to get started. Yeah, exactly. So the SDKs, right. the client SDKs will do this for you. They'll pick, you know, your usually if it's a mobile device, your front facing camera, uh, or if it's the web, it'll pick, you know, whatever your default webcam is. Because so again, these things also very configurable. So the SDKs will give you a lot of flexibility in how you choose these things too. So again, it's it's all about making it as easy as possible. I mean, I think a lot of people who are out there, many of us who are, you know, Farah and I host this show and, you know, Todd has his, you know, yeah, we change around the audio of the of the microphone that we use and stuff like that frequently. But I, I, my working with a lot of other developers and people that are out there, you just want to have a default so that people have some way to get started, right? Otherwise, you know, people are trying to figure out, oh my God, I don't know the difference between the, you know, Intel array microphone and it's listed four times and what, you know, I mean, you have to see, see these things over and over again to know exactly what it is. So I just, I like it when we have some the simplicity of just getting started, uh, providing everybody something to get going here. So this is a great thing. And of course we're getting to see Todd and Alex in duplicate, triplicate. Triplicate right now. You get triplicate. And we can go, and, and again, I, emphasizing it's across all your iOS and Android devices. Uh, you know, we support almost many, many, nearly of the major versions. Um, and then on web, obviously you have uh, Firefox, um, Chrome, Edge, Safari. Uh, so again, it's, you're, you're seeing this everywhere. It's, it's supported and you can join and we can create a very diverse and multi-platform live real-time streaming. 
I just want to point out, by the way, while you're talking, first, I love it. Um, but second, you know, even watching the Alex in Todd stream that's happening over there, it's like, I literally can't see a difference between, you know, how your voice is moving, even the stream in stream versus, you know, the actual link that's that's out here, which to me makes this all the more impressive, right, Farah? I mean, this is, we, we do a lot of streaming and that is not usually the reaction that happens, you know, stream within stream, we're like, okay, there was that five minutes ago that Alex said that? So, yeah. it's, kind of just like bracing yourself, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. it's really impressive. And to me, even more impressive is the fact that this is this is like launch day quality. This is like, we've just launched this two weeks ago. It's only going to continue to get better. Like everything IVS and, and AWS related, you know, it's just going to keep getting better with time. Um, I should also shout, out maybe i'll do that in a little bit but i'll throw it out there really quickly right now um and i'm not a like product pitch guy but this is something i'm just excited about because i think the technology is amazing mm -hmm. and i'm excited to see what people build on it but the thing i want to also throw out is that we've recently announced new pricing updates uh with ivs and up to 50 percent price cuts in in various regions um and, it, and this is the simple blog post, but I mean, we're talking about video output cost cut by up to 50% in South Korea, um, 40 per six, 46% in India. So in, in certain regions where in particular, those regions, live streaming is really, really popular. Um, there's a lot of different applications that are being built in, in APAC and in Eastern uh, Asia. Um, it, it's just really exciting. And um I'll throw out a question to you all that I threw out to my guests the other day. Art, Farah, if you were a developer and you had access to this technology, what kind of real-time streaming application would you build? Mm. I so don't know, I'll, but I... I'll, if, I'll give you a second to think about it. Alex, do you want to cover yours real quick while they think about that? And, and maybe that'll inspire them to... Yeah, sure. I think... So the great thing about the real-time system is you can have... Uh, as many inputs and outputs as you know we support today and i think that gives you a huge amount of flexibility in our old in a traditional system every single input has to go through the system and come out as a singular stream uh, in this system you can have many many inputs and it's all kind of consolidated under what we call the stage so for instance think about live action sports uh, my, my preference would be you know you're on maybe a downhill mountain biking course and you have like 12 different camera angles you could see them all at the same time. You could compose and choose which ones you wanted. Um, and those could all be changed dynamically in your application. And you could put them, you know, maybe on mobile, you want specific sizes and on web, you want different ones. So again, the flexibility that it gives you and the simplicity of it is, uh, it's just, I think you're going to be able to build a lot. All right, I'm going to cop to the fact that I am not good under pressure, Todd, <laughs> to come up with a perfect example. But I will say that as somebody, you know, occasionally consumes a handful of sports shows, go Broncos, Nick. Uh, sorry. And, you know, I think that, you know, having things from multi all of those multiple angles is super key, especially, uh, especially since, you know, we are, especially when something is happening on the field and I want to, you know, assess exactly how the team should have done what I think they should be doing to have won or, you know, or was that actually a penalty, you know, were the refs correct, that sort of thing. So having all those angles and being able to view it in real time is just a huge thing. So follow up on that. Although I, I do like the start when we are here, the karaoke live stream idea too. I just I throw that out too, but I think somebody's probably got a corner on karaoke. So Gotcha. Okay. Well, I would so I work a lot with the community and I think it'd be really awesome as like you're doing things in like your hometown or, you know, maybe in the city and kind of like taking the like, community on the like road with you and being able to like have them ask questions and be able to answer, you know, show things around and then having them to be able to do the same thing for you. I think that would be really, really cool. Interesting. Yeah. I have one final plug too. And I'll say we're talking about a lot of these things and it's all about being in remote places on mobile devices. The biggest thing with our system, you can check it out in the blog post. We have a feature called layer coding. And essentially this makes sure that even if you're in a really remote area, the video will be optimized for your network. So if your network is poor, it's going to give you the best quality video and it's still going to have the same latency. It's still going to have that same speed. So um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things to support a bunch of different creators 
bunch of different customers, a lot of, but many, many different use cases. Do you want to talk a little bit more about layered encoding, kind of what it, how it works and kind of what the point is of it and how it differs from HLS? Do we have time for that? can check, but we can also throw some maybe, yeah, well, I'm I'm happy to dig into it, but you can think about in the, in the world of, you know, streaming, you know, if you're, if you're a broadcaster Mm -hmm. who has really good internet and you are uploading, you know, like 4k video or 1080p video and somebody who's on their mobile phone is watching it, uh, in, IVS today with live streaming, uh, we take that video and we turn it into a bunch of different qualities. So you get like your highest quality, you get like a middle quality, a low quality, and on the device that's watching it will automatically adapt to the quality that makes sense. In real time, we do almost the exact same thing, except all that is done right on the person's device. So you actually send out all those qualities ahead of time. And then who's ever watching it, they're going to get basically forwarded the, the best quality for them. So these two systems essentially have two ways of doing it. And on the real-time system, we call it layered encoding. There's different layers of qualities and it's all encoded on the device. It's sent up and then it's forwarded. And then really all that that person's device just communicates with, with IVS and it says, hey, I'm on a bad network. I need your lowest quality. It's going to pull down that quality. Again, just like a little traffic guard on the server who's kind of like putting the video qualities where they need to go. All right. I think that was a good explanation and in a short period of time too. So, you know, we're all, so I want to thank the two of you for joining us here. This has been a ton of fun, at least for me, Farah. I know, you know, demos on a Friday, right? Well, greater way to end the, end the weekend uh, or end the week. Excuse me. Jokes. We like talked about fishing. We've been in a frat house today. I, I know. And I got, we both got an invite, I think to a party. Uh, this weekend. So I just want to say party at Todd's, uh, you know, I mean, when I was 16, just, I mean, the, 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 the shenanigans keep coming in. And this was our only like cat appearance. Farah has a cat, but that you know, looks like my cat. That looks like D'Angelo. It does. It does look like All right. D'Angelo. Nice. All right. All right. So I just want to thank uh, uh, the two of you, Alex and Todd, for joining us today. And and of course, I want to thank everybody out there for joining us. Uh, We're here weekly on uh, Tuesdays, uh, excuse me, on uh, Fridays at noon Pacific. Today is definitely not Tuesday on uh, Fridays at noon Pacific time. Uh, Feel free to join us. This is our kind of weekly wrap up of what's been happening in the AWS world. And we do share a ton of demos and videos on a on a weekly basis. And, you know, a shout out, uh, we have a bunch of other uh, shows as well uh, that are out there on the and part of the AWS family. And, you know, that my Tuesday confusion is, is normally I also happen to host a Tuesday show under the hood with AWS. So Todd's not the only one here that has his show. And we all kind of do little different things. So I encourage you to take a look. We have a sports show that launched yesterday as well. So you can see how sports kind of interfaces with the cloud and with getting data. So uh, without that, with that, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining, and uh, we'll see you uh, next week. And Farah, thank you for being here and being a fabulous uh, co-host. Today. Yeah, it's fun to hang out with you today. And there's also, don't forget to take the survey if you're watching. The, you can get, I think it's ten dollars in AWS credit. So uh, get those credits. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thank I you, appreciate everyone. it.